2026 is about to be wild for smartphones, especially if you care even a little bit about performance. Because once again, Samsung is doing that thing where they split the Galaxy S26 lineup into two different chips, depending on where you live. And yep, the old fight is back. Snapdragon versus Exynos. On one side, we have Qualcomm with the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. On the other side, Samsung with the brand new Exynos 2600. And this time, Samsung is saying, no really, trust us, this one is different. Now, before we get excited, let's set the mood. For years, Exynos chips have had a bad reputation. Slower performance, worse battery life, more heat, and people outside the US always felt like they got the weaker Galaxy phone. That history matters. Samsung knows it, fans know it, and that's why the Exynos 2600 is such a big deal. Samsung is calling this chip a turning point. The biggest headline first, Exynos 2600 is claimed to be the world's first 2 nanometer smartphone chip. That sounds insane, right? Smaller number usually means better efficiency, less heat, and better battery life, at least in theory. This chip is made by Samsung Foundry using their new 2NM GAA tech, which is supposed to be a huge step forward. Meanwhile, Qualcomm is playing it a bit safer. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is built on TSMC's 3NM process. Now, don't let that fool you. TSMC's 3NM is already very mature, very stable, and very powerful. Qualcomm is not behind here, they're just choosing reliability over risky first-gen tech. So on paper, Exynos has the smaller node, but real-life performance? That's still a big question mark. Now let's talk CPU, because this is where things get interesting. Qualcomm is sticking with what works. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 uses third-generation Orion CPU cores. These are Qualcomm's custom cores, and honestly, they've been monsters. Super fast, very efficient, and great for everyday use and heavy tasks. It's an 8-core setup, clean and simple. Samsung goes in a totally different direction. Exynos 2600 uses a 10-core CPU, based on ARM V9.3, and here's the bold move. Samsung completely removes low-power, weak cores. Instead, they use only higher-performance cores. Basically, Samsung is saying, why use tiny, slow cores at all? That sounds cool, but it also raises questions. Will it use more power? Will it drain battery faster? Or will Samsung's new design actually balance things out? We won't know until phones are in people's hands. Clock speeds tell another story. Snapdragon is going full speed demon mode. Two cores can hit up to 4.6 gigahertz. That is extremely high for a phone chip. This is all about raw power. Opening apps instantly, heavy gaming, fast AI tasks, no mercy. Exynos plays it safer. The fastest core tops out at 3.8 gigahertz. Lower number, yes, but Samsung seems to be aiming for stability, better thermals, and consistent performance instead of short bursts. So Snapdragon is like, let's go full throttle. Exynos is like, let's stay cool and smooth. Now let's talk GPU, because gamers care a lot about this. Samsung is bringing a new GPU called Xclipse 960. This is their own GPU, and they're making big claims up to double the performance compared to last gen, and a 50% improvement in ray tracing. If that's true, that's huge. Ray tracing on phones is still early, but better lighting and reflections in games could actually start to matter. Qualcomm fires back with the Adreno 840 GPU, and Adreno has always been solid. Qualcomm says this GPU is about 20% more power efficient and 25% better at ray tracing than before. So again, Exynos promises a big jump. Qualcomm promises steady, proven gains. Now let's get into the part Exynos has struggled with the most, heat. Thermals have been a nightmare for Exynos in the past. Phones getting hot, throttling, losing performance over time. Samsung knows this is their biggest weakness. So they introduced something called Heat Path Block, or HPB. This is built directly into the chip. The goal is to move heat away faster when the phone is under heavy load, like gaming or recording video. 
This is actually very interesting, because instead of relying only on phone cooling systems, Samsung is fixing heat at the chip level. Qualcomm doesn't do that. Snapdragon phones usually rely on big vapor chambers inside the phone itself. And to be fair, this has worked pretty well. So the big question is, does Samsung's new method actually work better in real life, or is it just a cool name on a slide? Now we have to talk about AI, because in 2026, every phone is basically an AI machine. Qualcomm says their Hexagon NPU is 37% faster than before. This helps with things like live translations, smart camera features, AI assistance, and stuff running fully on the phone, without the cloud. But though, Samsung goes crazy with numbers here. They claim a 113% boost in AI performance. That's massive. If true, this means better image editing, smarter voice assistants, and larger AI models running directly on your phone, which also helps with privacy. Again though, claims versus reality. So what does all this mean for you, the actual user? If Samsung delivers on its promises, the Exynos 2600 could finally be a real competitor to Snapdragon. Not just good enough, but actually equal, or maybe even better in some areas. But if things go wrong, history will repeat itself. Snapdragon regions get the better phone, Exynos regions feel disappointed again. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 feels like the safe bet. Strong performance, proven efficiency, and very predictable results. Exynos 2600 feels like a gamble. High risk, high reward. And honestly, this chip war is exactly what we want. Competition pushes both sides harder. Better battery life, better performance, better phones for everyone. The Galaxy S26 series is going to be the real test. Same phone, two different brains. And once reviews drop, we'll finally know if Exynos has grown up or if Snapdragon still rules the Android world. Either way, 2026 is not boring, not even close.